Welcome to week nine of our Cork City, so our Cork City Marathon training plan. Um, with again our regulars, Brian Hearn. How are you? All good. We're closer to the end than the start now at this stage, so you better just keep going on and get to the end at this stage. Yeah, exactly. And the new suited and booted Ken Nason. What a stylish jacket you have there. Looking, looking well, yeah. Ken. Looking well. Tr trying to look as important as you guys now. Yeah, if I look, you can try all you want. It's all about the gear. Sometimes I'm you trying, can, you know. Sometimes you cannot succeed. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're all here for one reason, and that is definitely not fashion tips. So we're going to move on to the plan. And Ken Nason, have yeah. you got the plan ahead of you? To I have it down here. So week nine, guys, we're getting really far into it now. So Monday, again, we have a rest day. Um, Tuesday, 35 to 40 minutes, easy conversational pace. Wednesday is our workout day, 15 minutes warm up and 15 minutes warm down. Um, five by three minutes repetitions with two minutes recovery. That's two minutes recovery after each five uh, by three minute repetition. Um, and that's about a 70% effort. Okay, so Thursday, Friday is rest day. Saturday, we have 35 to 40 minutes and we're climbing up again on Sunday, getting uh, more time on our feet, uh, two hours and 10 minutes to two hours and 20 minutes. Now, we also have added there again, and we said this as well last week, you know, if you're doing a race, i.e. the Cove 10 miler in, in Cork is on this weekend, you know, if you're doing or this weekend, but you follow me, there's a different races on, you know, try get a race in as well if you need to if you race this week don't race the following week though so you just need to bear that in mind as well with that so just plan your races if you want to give us a message and say look i'm racing this weekend what should i do next weekend we mm -hmm. can have a quick discussion with you there's no problems there as well yeah, but you know right. it is important and i think two things if you are racing obviously one you can neither decide to run it at what your goal marathon pace is and use it as a trainer one but like if you are going to race it and push yourself hard, that's slightly different. And, you know, you may have a knock effect, knock on effect out of that, too. So just yeah. bear that in mind as well. Yeah. So and as well, I would say this much. There's nothing wrong with going into a race after doing a session on the Wednesday, because what you are, you're going into a little bit tired legs. Yeah. And that kind of stimulates the muscles to realize, oh, God, I'm going to be tired. And it kind of makes you think you're later on in a race, you know, that kind of way. So I think I don't think that's a bad idea. You don't need to taper into these races at the moment, I think I'd, I'd prefer personally to see a yeah. lot of it done on tired legs. You're using yeah. a mass training. Yeah, exactly. So I think as well, like we're week nine, so probably the next, like while every week is a vital week and every week, you know, is a, is a jigsaw to the final pic, pic, uh, picture, we're probably into the five or six crucial weeks now in terms of the mileage will be at its highest. The sessions probably will be at their highest. So we're kind of and, hitting that time frame now. And this long run is going to, hit up big time in the next week or two as well. You know what I mean? It's it's yeah. it's going to jump all of a sudden where before we've been taking 10 minutes increments nearly, it's all of a sudden going to jump up. So again, Brian, I know we got a, a couple of um compliments over the taking the stigma out of walking um in, in yeah. the marathon, which I think is important. And again, I do kind of echo Brian's point of in these long runs, if it needs to take your, you know, one minute walk and break and go again and then go for you know agree time with what yourself don't worry about it nobody cares you're the person running it once you're happy with it that's the most important thing yeah and i would certainly say there's people and unfortunately like it's best to be realistic that there is people when we start getting into this extra mileage of who are possibly going to struggle um, and find it hard but don't you know don't walk away from it you've put in so much already eight weeks have passed you put in, you know you might have to relook at your plan you might have to extend your time and, and go a bit slower you might have to bring in the run walk technique whatever it is but like stick with it you will get through it there will be some tough weeks for sure you know mm. yeah Ken? and i'm like i just like say i've had one or two people who are listening to this and who have been into me here and i've had discussions with them where they where they've adjusted back their easy pace and it's helped them run more continuous mm. where they didn't have to stop as much yeah exactly yeah. and that's that again comes back to the point last week yeah. easy pace is easy pace you know what i mean yeah. and and use this easy pace as your recovery from your session and your long run because they are vital and i would also throw in one other thing there in that only you and like 
you've got to listen to your own body. This is a plan. It's a flat level plan where, you know, ideally it works for everybody. But look, people have things happen in their own personal lives and they'll have things happen after run that they just mightn't recover quickly enough. Just always listen to the body. You know, if if you're feeling fatigued and you're not up to work for going out to that easy run, maybe just shorten it or take it mm. take it off if you have to. Um, you know, you want to stay as fresh and, and injury free as possible. The journey to the marital line is nearly as important. Yeah, you know. it is. And also, yeah. and look, again, I think have a chat with somebody, you know, mm-hmm. talk to somebody, is it be a friend or be or anything like that, and just say, look, I'm struggling here. You know, I just need, you need to vent sometime with these things, and it just does help you ever so slightly, you know. So, you know, vent. There's no issue. You can you vent can, on us. That's why can, we're doing you can, this. You can vent on direct message us and we'll you can vent yeah. away or, or ring somebody or and, yeah. and family members, whatever like that. Just vent. Actually, try not to vent with family members, but anyway. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> so, work well. Yeah, exactly. So again, quick briefly there. The plan is again on the Tuesdays, 35 to 40 minutes. On the Wednesday is 15 minute warm-up, five by three minutes, um, with two minutes easy, and then a 15 minute cool down. And then on Saturday is 35 to 40 minutes. And then Sunday is two hours, 10 to two hours, 20. So enjoy that. And look again, let us know how you get on. And we will just get an update on how people are doing. Also, last week, lads, we had a lovely competition for the box of precision fueling gels. Okay. So we've now... We've, what we've realized, Brian, is that, you know, there's a lot of people, we record this on a Thursday night, and there is a lot of people who still put in the comments on the Friday and Saturday, because technically it's only out a few days. So we're going to hold off the draw till, you know, Saturday morning now, effectively, and I'm going to add it into the video before we send it out. So I'm going to say we're going to go to the winner right now, but we don't know who the winner is. So here's the winner right now. <laughs> And congratulations to that winner who we don't just know give, right now. You've just given, given away our editing secrets. Yeah. <laughs> you're so, so slick up to know. It's like, just you, unbelievable. You've let the rabbit out of the bag. So everybody, from now on, you have till the Friday night, midnight, till first thing Saturday morning, really, effectively, to um, get your name in the draw um, because I will be record doing the video of that on, I would say, about 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. And I will add it into the video and we will get it out on yeah, Saturday um, kind of evening. We'll get it out then as well. So, yep. we Question move time. on. To, no, not yet. We got another oh, yeah. I, don't, you, uh, Look, I just think there's going to be a week when you won't have a prize and we have oh, another prize. Yeah. Pull a prize no. out of the bag. No, lads, we've, we, we, what have we covered so far? We've covered pillar performance, so that's your sleep. We've covered gels we've covered socks. socks we've covered a massage so i have another form of recovery now for people so thanks to bure Rich, mm-hmm. all right we have got a recovery session in bure Rich out in tremor um road so damien very kindly not me other damien from bure Rich, kindly has given us um a recovery session for the lucky winner um, and they'll be able to pick the day that they wish to have it. So, you know, maybe a nice Sunday after a nice long run would be a good day to go out there or after your session or something like that or on your recovery day. So this is brilliant. They have the recovery boots out there. They have the ice bats. They have the, um, Sauna. the saunas. They have everything outside there. Um, mm-hmm. So this is an incredible place to visit. And, you know, I do think people should make time for this. And it's just, again, it's for your own headspace as well, that you go out there and just relax a small bit and forget about the pain that you had suffered beforehand. Um, another great so, prize, in fairness. Another great prize. So again, Doris, yeah. a massive thank you to Damien for that. Um, so we will draw that, as I said, that competition winner will be announced on our next video. So you have till Saturday week, right? Saturday morning week to get your um, name in for that. So best luck to everybody. All again, like and subscribe and drop a comment below. This can only be one on the YouTube channel. So a massive thank you again to Pure Rich. Excellent. Yeah. So Saturday 13th is the cutoff for that one. Correct. Yes. At yeah. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Question time. Question times. Let's go. Yeah. I think we got 
fewer questions in this week, so people are people are learning and getting good, I think. But a uh, couple of questions in. So first question is, hi, guys. I know everybody is different and you encourage people to try different different gels. But if you were to give recommendations of a brand type to use in marathon training, what would it be? Using high five aquas at the moment, but not sure they're giving me the best boost. Very good question. Very good question. But mm -hmm. also a very loaded question. Okay, mm -hmm. so the high five aqua has 23 grams of carbs. All right. Where they come very handy is the fact they obviously you have water built into it already. And you don't need to plan around the water station for them and you can just take them and off you go. They're not too heavy. So I think they're about 60 grams, I think is in around that uh, weight wise. So they're not that heavy. But, you know, again, that extra water does add up if you're carrying six to eight of them. Um, You are looking at, as we've said before, for a fella, roughly around 70 to 80 grams. For a woman, you're looking at roughly around 60 to 70. Okay. Very hard to get that. The magic number, I, I think, if you can somewhat hit, would be about 60-ish, um, and then you're ideal. So, brand-wise, and I mean, it's, it's trial and error, but the more carbs you can get into, the better. This week's competition that we just announced the winner for, for the um, precision fueling, you know, that's 30 grams of carbs. But I know now Power Bar have just released a new gel, which has 30 grams of carbs. SIS have a gel, which has 40 grams of carbs, but it's a lot thicker. Now, there's a few different variants in it, but, you know, one, the most important thing is it has to agree with you. And that is most important. 23 grams of carbs, if you're getting that gel in, as opposed to taking a 30 gram carb, which doesn't agree to you, is a hell of a lot better. Do you know what I mean? So that is yeah. it. So yeah. brand wise, it's up to you. Yeah. High uh, high five aqua is one of the most popular gels around there, but if you can get more carbs into you, that's going to help you in the long run. Yeah, agreed. Not very good. Yeah, I, I everything, yeah. can't change too much there. I've yeah. tried a good few over the years, like texture as well. Some of them are very different, as you said. Some are more watery. Some of them are more pasty, kind of thicker. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going with the precision fuel at the moment and they're really working well for me. There's good, yeah. as you said, there's good carbs in them and they sit well in the stomach, but I've tried other ones that haven't. So again, I think your point of trial and error is the key to this as well. Yeah, and again, Brian, you do need to tr to to try a few different legs. So like, you know, you have the Martin hair, right? So, you know, that is more of a jelly-like substance, which some people can't take, all right? you This is the SIS, which has 40 grams of carbs in it, all right? So, but it is a heavier weight in it, you know what I mean? And it's a bigger gel. So if you're carrying six of them, you know, that is quite a bit. And then if you do like something, you know, with a bit of substance in it, you have the goo gels. All right. So here, this is more of a pasty one, which you would definitely need to take a bit of water well, with. Good that you said, actually, because I actually find those ones hard to take myself. So yeah. it just gives an example. No, I have no problem with Martin. I have no problem with Precision, but the goo ones mm. I find hard. Yeah. And yeah. then you have the kind of a few different high power bar ones here. This is not the new one. No, this is the, the, the model before and as they're still available. But again, with some of them like High Five. So if you see High Five, you let's see the High Five Energy, which is kind of ones that you do need that bit of water with. This power bar original is very similar to that. You do need that hint of water, but they do have the hydro here which is the water built into it like your your aqua as well so I, yeah you know, i would add as well sorry going there's loads like the, yeah. the standard sis you know so sorry no i actually used the the high five um <laughs> for a, a video so <laughs> that's why i don't have them ones um but you know there's so many different types you have to try them but try to get something with a good carb content yeah and i think vital and we've said this in the past on one of the previous weeks is that you know, one, obviously the trial and error, but two, a new runner, and a novice runner, first marathon time, it's going to be very hard to take five, I would say very few with stomach five to six gels. You know, if you've used, if you tried it and it worked, then great, but like it might be a mixture of something else. It might be taking on a bar, bar half around. It might be taking on a banana half around or something there, like that, you know. Sorry, Brian, five to six gels is nothing, by the way. You know what yeah. I mean? So like if you're looking at, take this in mind, but if you're taking a 30 gram gel, you're looking at a gel every half an hour. Yeah. So if you're out for five hours, that's 10 gels. Oh, 10 yeah. gels is a lot to take. Like yeah, five to lot. six is okay. 10 gels is 
too much to take. So you do need to find something to fill that gap of where you're not going to take a gel every half an hour, but you need to take something that's going to give you some carb content. That's where the jellies come in. That's where, you know, the drinks, the carb drinks, if you can, if you can have someone who can give you a drink again in it, that's where they come into it. So depending on your time, if you're, Brian, for you, three hours, okay, it's six gels. Mm -hmm. right, you know, that, that's that's okay. When you're going into the four, four and a half, five, five and a half hours, you're going to need something added besides yeah. the gel because you're not going to keep so, them down. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to keep it down. Yeah, I, just like, again, it's, that's a great point because just from experience and from people I know, I do think a lot of people, once they go above the five stomach things start happening or six maybe, you know, again, it's all down to practice, as I said, but like when you when you start getting into those bigger numbers, your stomach is going to be coming under pressure, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You exactly. kind of have to keep it to what you did when in your training. Yeah. And there's no extent. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. We hope that answered that one. Next one, Brian. Oh, we had a second question. We spent so long talking about that one. I forgot about the second <laughs> one. Um, the second one is uh, great advice each week. Do you have any guidance around running with bad knees, runner's knee during the plan? I usually expect experience pain after 15 to 20 K distances, but hoping to complete the Cork Marathon. Any thoughts around knee support band versus KT tape? That's a kind of a hard one to answer in some ways, but yeah, with the KT tape and things like that, it's designed to increase the range of motion around the joints, but mainly for people suffering arthritis and their knees and things like that. Um, like support bands, but like I asked the question, if there's problems with loading and knee and all that stuff, it could be issues, tightness of the quad, it could be issues coming from your hip and things like that. I think this person needs to see somebody to get a proper diagnosis mm -hmm. of it. Go see a physio, go see someone just to get it looked at properly, rather than suffering through it. I think the advice on the knee support versus the advice mm -hmm. on the injury, I think it's probably the two different things here, isn't it? Yeah. I my I also what the person could look at if they've been to physios or whatever like that. I, we don't know, obviously. So yeah, like, we don't know where to a couple of things is what you can look at. And right now is probably not the ideal time, but is yeah. try to take the stress off the body of running on the road, try to go out, yeah. i.e. the farm or something like that. But I know it's yeah. gonna be extremely soft at the moment. Also, are you wearing the right shoes? Are you wearing exactly. a cushioned shoe? Are you wearing something that's you've had for four years and you mm -hmm. know the cushion is totally gone out of it? Therefore, every time you hit the ground, the comp like you know, the shock of is coming right up into your body and it's not been absorbed yeah. through the foams, you know. And these are all little things you can look at. No, hundred percent, Ken, you are dead right. Yeah. The first thing you need to do is go straight to your yeah. um specialist to get it yeah. seen. It could be something very simple that is causing this issue for you. But there is other things as well. Yeah, I don't know if the, if that sentence is, leads us to think like, but it's saying I usually experience pain after fifteen to twenty k distances. So it's like after a certain distance, it seems to come come and that, yeah, that could link that back to the shoes as you said. Where because yeah. the shoes kind of are like not supporting them enough for a longer distance, so they could mm -hmm. be kind of worn down as well. Yeah. So yeah. look, I I I the first thing I would do one right if you check a specialist two. Yeah. Get your shoes checked and yeah. three then if you can take some of your load off the road and onto grass if possible. Again, I know places at the moment are not ideal for that, but you know, hopefully in the next few months we'll have sun sunnier days that you can do it. But I know that's no good to right now. And yeah. maybe it needs to look at kind of some crop like you know, maybe S sacrifice S one session for a bike mm -hmm. session or something like that, or you know. But like maybe the, the, yeah. just some strength can some small strengthening exercises for the quads or the hips might take the load off the knee as well. So there's a lot of factors involved. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if that doesn't answer it, that person can direct message us again and we can yeah. get into it a bit more. Maybe yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's so that's, I think for this week. that's it. Um no, I'm not gonna lie to you, Brian. And Ken, this has been a very tough episode for me, mainly because I got given out to about over last week's episode. All right. Oh. So last week I got given out to, I won't mention who, by the way, um, about me having a pen and fiddling around with a pen too much. OK, so oh, I, I, do, I do it here. Someone watching, yeah. Someone watching. Yeah. So I have been I think I've been quite good. So I hope this person has appreciated me taking the effort to try to control my pen waving you, around. At least it's not a. Bottle of beer or a can of beer or anything like <laughs> that. So, yeah, the pen is good. Yeah, I've had three people saying I'm supposed to constantly disagree with you about warm down and cool down. So, yeah, they told me I'm supposed to keep saying it. 
Well, you, we, I keep beeping you out, so don't worry about that. Ken, um, we had a poll, and that was decisive, so you're yeah, retired from cool. Right, lads, before this goes into a full-blown argument, um, <laughs> thank, thank you to everybody um, who has subscribed to the show and who has commented and has sent us some very kind words and entered competitions. We really appreciate it. Um, myself and Ken and Brian obviously do this because we just love it. And we really enjoy it. And we hope that you are taking something from it. So till next week, enjoy. Yeah. And don't forget to enter our competition by the 13th of April at 8am. There you go. Till next week. Okay, till next week. See you, bye. <laughs>